All right, my name is Beth and we have a couple of wonderful guests with us today. And before we get started with our chat about National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week, um, I just wanted to make note that October is LGBTQ History Month, uh, which is a time dedicated to recognizing important moments in the history of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans folks, um, and it encompasses a number of historically important days. And so this October is set to remind both the LGBTQ community and wider communities of important roles that um, those folks have played in shaping and creating the social, legal, and political worlds we live in today. So just wanted to make note of that. And in celebration of the month, uh, you can actually join us on Thursday, October 22nd at 10 p.m. on WebEx for Drag Queen Bingo. Yes, I said Drag Queen Bingo. Um, and so you can join us for a super fun night of virtual bingo uh, with uh, Mrs. Kasha Davis, one of RuPaul's Drag Queens. So just wanted to throw that out there as an event coming up at Harper. And then also in October, specifically, uh, which is what we're talking about this week, is uh, National Collegiate National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week, so kind of a mouthful, um, but it, it's important um, in more than a thousand universities and colleges across the nation use this week to bring attention to alcohol-related issues uh, such as excessive alcohol consumption um, and to promote uh, responsible drinking. And so, um, you know, before we get started, according to 2017 National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism survey, more than half so 53.6% of full-time college students consumed alcohol in the past month. Um, in the same period, 34.8% of full-time students participated in binge drinking. So um, really important talk, topic to discuss today. And so myself, Beth Rebarger, I'm the wellness manager at Harper College. Um, and so Veronica, if you want to go ahead and take it from here. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica Tantoko. I'm the Assistant Director of Operations and Special Events at the Health and Recreation Center at Harper College. And today on Hawk Talk, we have two special guests, Neil Hemmer and Sarah Briley. Um, so thank you, Neil and Sarah, for joining us today. Uh, you know, as Beth mentioned, National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week is a, it's a long time. Also, you might hear us reference it as NCAAW, uh, just to kind of save us on that mouthful, getting jumbled up. But, uh, you know, just to get started on the topic, can you tell us, uh, Sarah and then Neil, a, a little bit about yourself and any experience or connection you might have to NCAAW? Hello, okay, I'm Sarah Briley. I have heard of NCAAW. Um, I've been working in the field of addictions for about 20 years. Um, it's, I tell people that it's a it's an area that I fell into. I initially, as a young therapist, thought that I would work primarily with children and adolescents, and I tried to steer clear of addictions um, because of my own um, personal experience with um, having many loved ones who live with the disease of addiction. Um, but the universe had other plans for me, so I've worked in corrections. I used to work for a time out at the corrections facility in St. Charles with young adult um, males who have substance use disorders. And then I have been with Amita Alexian Brothers for the past 17 years. I oversee the addictions program um, at Amita Alexian Brothers Behavioral Health, our partial hospital IOP program. Um, and uh, addictions work is my passion, and I feel like it's really something that I'm called to do. Um, my area of specialty that I particularly like working in is with young adult substance users. Um, and their families. So it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you for having me. I am Neil Hemmer. Um, I am a Harper College alumni, um, which is sweet that this has now come full circle. And I was invited here today. It's a pleasure to be here. I was a heavy drinker for 10 years. So I am your resident lived experience person. Um, yeah, I started drinking when I was like 13 and it followed me all the way up until eight months ago. My eight months of sobriety is coming up. Uh, I am also a licensed therapist. Uh, I have my master's degree in social work, uh, and my passion is working with the persistently and chronically mentally ill. Uh, it is important in our field to take care of ourselves and to also bring awareness to things like alcohol abuse and substance use disorders. 
Uh, and I, even with all of the, the hefty knowledge I have in learning about these things in class, did not take care of myself for the longest time. So it's good to be here. I actually didn't know that NCAAW was a thing. Um, we were talking about it before, though, and even thinking about like the, you know, the PSAs of how many you know, college kids die a year from alcohol abuse or misuse or all those things. I think I looked at those signs way back when it was like, those people just can't drink. That's crazy. That's not, <laughs> you know, they're, they're like lamos who, uh, who, who can't hold their liquor. Um, and now I have such a different perspective on it. So it's very cool to be a part of this talk. Um, thank you, Neil and Sarah, for giving us a little bit of background. And also congrats to Neil on your sobriety of eight months. And so to, to follow up with that question, even if you, this is the first time that you've heard of National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week, you know, starting with maybe Neil this time, you know, why do you think it's important for colleges and university to highlight or bring awareness to NACAW? Yeah, I, so I think first and foremost, it's important to have those facts blasted at us, right? Even if it doesn't reach us at the time. Um, and I, I distinctly remember being at Harper and seeing like poster boards of you know, like, oh, these amount of people die every year or oh, whoa, opioid use is, is on the rise. Like be aware of like these certain drugs and blah, blah, blah. Um, those things stick, whether universities know it or not. I mean, they, they, they stuck in the back of my brain even if I was making fun of them at the time. But I also think it's very important because me getting treatment for my alcohol use wasn't a one and done thing. It wasn't a, oh my gosh, I come to Jesus moment. I woke up one day and someone was like, you have an alcohol problem. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know that for the past 10 years. Like, <laughs> let's take care of this. It was these little subliminal messages along the way that, that shipped away at the mountain. It was taking the pebbles out one by one to kind of crumble me. Um, and I think it's important to highlight all of these things that are common and are not common, but celebrated, recognized, celebrated. It's, it's, it's the norm that, you know, college kids are heavy drinkers or that, oh, before your, your class, why don't you, you know, take the edge off and, and have a drink? I mean, I did that numerous times. It just, it wasn't weird. So I think it's important for universities and colleges to recognize this and also create events that are not only educational, but um, human. Human and interactive and connective and to, and to show people that without alcohol, life is just fine. Without alcohol, without drugs, you can get through your college experience and get through the stresses of life without substances. Um, and I think that's something that wasn't really highlighted to me um, fervently during my time. There were a lot of educational experiences, but the interactivity and the connectivity and the human aspect of it is what I think is really important for colleges and universities to highlight. Yes. Thank you, Neil. And thank you for just being your human self. And so I really enjoyed that. And um, Sarah, I, I don't know if you have something to add there. No, you know, I, I can even remember the, the messaging I got back in college. And, and, you know, I can remember there being some discussion of it, but it was so normalized. Um, I think that, it, you know, um, your college experience should be an awesome one. And I, um, I think that this is a really critical time to get in front of students to talk about the dangers of binge drinking um, and um, allow people to make some informed decisions. And like Neil said, even if these are seeds that we plant now, I think that that's um, information that people can carry on with them into the future. I also want to say that, you know, the, especially for our younger students, um, 18 to 22, that's such a critical time for brain development. So if we give people really good information about the effects of alcohol on the brain, especially during that critical um, gap or that age range, 18 to 22, I think that um, people would be surprised um, at how many impacts alcohol has on the developing brain. That's it for that. Thank you, yeah. I mean, even to this day, I remember my college orientation, they gave us cards, um, even, even though like, hey, you're not old enough to drink, but keep this in your wallet. You never know when it's going to come in handy. And it's actually something I still keep like today, like resources to like what to do if someone, you know, is uh, suffering from alcohol poisoning, uh, things along that line. And, you know, it's a 
those little things, like you said, those little messages that you kind of think about along the way that kind of keep you, you know, kind of in check, like, hey, like, is this too much? Is this what's going on? Uh, and, you know, you kind of touched on this, but like TV and movies, social media, you know, peer interactions, it's, you know, commonly shown that you need a drink to be cool. You need to drink so you have a actually fun and true college experience. Um, either Sarah Neal, can you speak to some of the common misconceptions about alcohol use and or alcohol abuse? One example um, that I've heard from college students is, oh, because I'm in college, even if I drink every day, it doesn't mean I have a substance abuse issue. I, I, I can speak to that. That's actually, you know, that is a common mis misperception. I think one of the things I think is important for people to know is that um, really what binge drinking is first, because I think that all the behavior is so normalized that people don't even think about what is, a, what is binge drinking. And binge drinking really um, is considered four drinks in a row for women and five for men. Um, and so, um, as you talked about, Beth, most, um, not most, but a significant portion of our college age students are engaging in binge drinking. Um, so, I think that it's important that we first educate people about that. And then we need to give education about the risks associated with that. And there's so many short term risks um, for college students that, um, that go along with binge drinking. If you look at all the data about this, is that we know that um, vehicular um, accidents, DUIs, um, physical assault, sexual assaults, um, personal injuries, psychiatric issues, um, even rates of suicide and um, death go up with people who are engaging in binge, binge patterns of drinking. So while it's normalized, does that make it okay? Um, and so how um, having discussions, open discussions about that is that just because other people say that I should be doing this doesn't mean that I really should be doing this. So um, most students are, um, you know, they get that messaging, but then how do we have them st step back and take a look at um, what are my own patterns of behavior and is this leading me in a direction that I like? Yeah, and I would, <clears throat> yeah, not only could I not agree more, but also I think that it's important to the, the the biggest part of what you just said is really important to me. What is my own behavior and is it okay? And, you know, really interesting because I think that long before my friends started saying, Hey, like, I think you have a problem, blah, blah, blah. You know, I was waking up and I was, I was noticing all these things that like, I didn't really, I don't really like this about myself. I don't like how much I'm drinking. I don't like how I feel in the morning. I don't like any of these things. Right. I don't like my behavior, but, I was ignoring all of it because it's what everyone else was doing. And I know that that sounds like some super weird adult after school crap special stuff that like, I'm like, whoa, kids, hey, look at your own behavior. And like, do you like yourself when you look in the mirror? But it's true. Like, do you like what you see when you look in the mirror? And also, I think it's important just to know like, that your gut feeling about your behavior is probably correct. Like if you're thinking, wow, you know, I'm on a, I'm on a bad path and this is not what I should be really doing. It's, it's probably true. Um, but yeah, I would also just like to speak like that binge drinking is the furthest thing from cool. And I look back at, at, at all the times where I would wake up um, and have to call my friends and ask, oh my gosh, what, what, what did I do last night? Or oh, was my behavior okay? And blah, blah, blah. Totally going against my values and my morals. Right. And I think one of the most important pieces that I would tell my younger self is what are your values? What are your morals and, and are you sticking to them? Are you really living up to who you could be the best you that you could possibly be? Once again, I feel like that's something an after school special would say, but whatever. Um, it's true that I, you know, these are such formative years of where you're building yourself into the man or the woman you're going to become for the rest of your life. And is that what you want your foundation to be? It's like, oh man, you know, I look back now and I'm like, wow, my years in college could have been, my years in college were great, but they could have been three times as good, four times as good, eight times as good if I could remember all of them. And if I didn't make so many dumb mistakes and by, you know, it's just, it's so avoidable if you just take a step back and look at the bigger picture for a second. I know it's so easy to get wrapped up into friends and girlfriends and boyfriends and relationships and school and whatever, but 
really this is the foundation for the rest of your life. And it's important to zoom out and look at what's going on around you. So I'm going to have Neil be on a billboard um, for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to have your quotes smattered on a billboard. So that was amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, what both of you said, I think is exactly right. And even in my own college experience, I didn't have a role model to show me what drinking in moderation looked like. And so I think um, when I did choose to drink, it was an excess and not moderation. And, and so I think that was really important when I finally started to do some of this work. I was like, oh my gosh, like, that was not normal. Like, that was terrible. And I don't like how I feel. And you don't have to feel this way. So I resonated with what both of you were saying in so many different ways. And, you know, kind of uh, to go along with that, um, what are some tips or strategies you can give to those who might choose to abstain from alcohol. So maybe a person is choosing not to drink, um, or if a, a person does choose to drink, what are some ways in which they can uh, ensure that they're drinking in moderation? And so maybe Sarah, if you want to go first. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think that um, particularly with younger adults, I think it's the idea that a person can be alcoholic is, is hard to get their head around is that, oh, I'm only 20, I'm only 21, or even even younger, I'm 18, I can't be an alcoholic. But you, but that is possible, it, it can and will happen. So I, um, I talk to um, people who choose not to drink is that take a stand. Um, Neil talked about this is that um, living your values. There's a book that I recommend to everybody and, and Neil, you probably have read it. It's called The Happiness Trap. And it's a really good book and it really talks about, it really challenges us. It's a self-help book built on a, a, a psychotherapy um, modality called ACT or acceptance and commitment therapy. And it's about really looking at and examining your value. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we didn't plan that. Neil's got it. Um, so it's, it's my favorite book. Um, and it really challenges you to look at who am I and what do I stand for, my value. So take a stand. Um, if you choose not to drink, that's cool. That is cool. Um, stand for the things that are important to you and work towards having behavior that matches with who you, who you want to be. For those folks who do want to drink in moderation, um, in individual therapy, I might start with somebody setting it like an experiment, I call it. So, okay, so you're kind of concerned about your drinking. Um, why don't we do an experiment? Let's um, say you're, let's set um, parameters about how much you're going to drink and how many days you're going to drink. So, okay, you're going to go out on Friday night and you're going to have three alcoholic drinks. So that would be one beer, uh, one beer is one drink, one glass of wine is one drink, or one shot is one drink. Okay, then let's next week, let's report back. Were you able to do that? Um, how, did that um, how did that go for you? Did you drink more than you said you were going to? Did you drink more often than you said that you were going to? So we talk about experiments. When people aren't able to kind of honor their own value system, that's when we can have a, then a different conversation about, okay, maybe it's time to look at something different. I'm a huge advocate for abstinence. Um, I work in an abstinence-based recovery program. Um, you know, once you have the disease of addictions, in my opinion, then you, then abstinence is the best strategy. But I know that not everybody's ready to start there, and not everybody is alcoholic who is drinking. So um, I, I, that's what I generally challenge people to do. Other things too, just simple safety things. Make sure that you're going out in groups. Make sure that you are that you have rideshare apps on your phone so that you have a safe way to get home. Make sure that you have somebody who you can call to pick you up if you get yourself in a, a difficult situation. So those are my best tips and strategies. Yeah, I'll be I'll be brief with this. I think the biggest thing for me, um, so I went to a residential program actually with Amita Health. Um, thank you. And for the first two weeks, I went there and I was like, I'm not quitting drinking. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm here to moderate. I'm here to practice harm reduction. And but what, you know, what Sarah was talking about was harm reduction, right? You, you have this many drinks and then see if you can cut down and then blah, blah. Um, but if that doesn't work, right, then absence is the best choice. But for two weeks, I was like, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. I'm drinking for the rest of my life and you can't stop me. Two weeks in, I had this like, hi, Bob, moment where it's like, I am so set, like I'm digging my heels and putting all of my energy into drinking. I, I can just not do that. And I was like, whoa, really? And I was like, yeah. Like for me, it was this angry 13 year old inside me that I was like, you tell me I can't drink, I'm gonna drink double hard. You can't tell me not to drink, right? But when I 
took my personal autonomy back and it's like, guys, it's a choice. It's a choice. Like I, you know, sure. Do I feel like it's probably not safe for me to drink because I really believe that I have a neurochemical imbalance that makes me addicted? Mm -hmm, for sure. But also it's how you phrase it. For me, I, for, I'm just choosing not to drink. I even don't attach to my identity the term of alcoholic. I just tell people that I have a problem with alcohol. And you know, if, if it's, it's about what's easiest to swallow for you and what's easiest for your identity to take, um, in, in my personal experience. Because it's like hearing the word alcoholic and hearing like, oh, like Neil, you can never drink again. I was like, mm-mm, you can't tell Neil what to do ever. Um, but then when I made that choice, I don't think I'm ever gonna drink again because it's just bad for me. I don't want to, it's not fun, and I have enough fun without that chemical help. Um, and I think that's another weird, wonky after school special thing to say, but it's true. Like you, you really don't, I mean, I fully believe that 99.999% of you don't need alcohol to have fun. You're all fun people. You're in college, you're young, you're adventurous, you're full of vigor. Like go do something adventurous that you couldn't, do otherwise go drive somewhere go to the movies go bowling go to something that uses your like fine motor skills that you're like you can look back and be like whoa there's no way i could be doing that if i've been drinking no way in the world you know um so yeah and i would think that also the easiest transition for me was that identity piece like for people who are choosing to abstain just tell people, like, it's, it's not that weird. I think it was drilled into me also um, in my recovery programs and stuff that like, ah, like I'm gonna lose a bunch of friends, like people are not gonna understand. And I think that that is one of the biggest myths. All of my friends immediately were like, that's totally cool, we don't care. Like, I think society and the media is like, whoa, people are gonna think you're a weirdo. That's not true. It's, it's much weirder to black out every night and I have all your friends and family worry about you. They just be like, I don't wanna drink anymore. You're just as fun. You're just as cool, I, I promise you. I don't even know you and I think you're cool, so please. And yeah, for those who do wanna drink in moderation, I would say, you know, j just what Sarah said, because I'm actually not an expert on this, mental health expert, not substance use expert. So. <laughs> I, I love that. And I so appreciate the two of you. And you know, Veronica is going to send us home with um, our wrap up here. Yes. Uh, thank you, Neil and Sarah, for taking your uh, time to speak with us today. Um, you know, it's been a great conversation and I've learned a lot. I, and I've been also working with individuals uh, who in, specifically college students and other young adults. Uh, you know, looking for resources on how to uh, abstain, how to uh, work, you know, being responsible if they are participating in uh, drinking at this college level. Uh, but, you know, so thank you so much for joining us today. And also thank you to our viewers uh, who are joining us for this episode of Hawk Talk. And you know, make sure you join us next week because we will be doing a special Halloween at Home episode. Um, and on that note, we are going to say goodbye to our guests and everyone enjoy your day and stay safe and happy National Collegiate Alcohol Awareness Week. <laughs>